Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. And I've got a really cool fish to share with you and that is the Rusty Cichlid. If you're looking for a cichlid, an Imbuna Cichlid that's not super aggressive, that has awesome color, this might be the fish for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. So this is a 33 long fish tank. It's got the same dimensions as a 55. It's just four feet long about 12 and a half inches wide, and it's a little bit shorter than a 55. So this is Iototrophus spring ray, otherwise known as the rusty or lavender cichlid. I really like this fish. It is from Africa, Lake Malawi. It is an Imbuna. Now, normally when we hear that about these fish, we would instantly think super aggressive. That's not quite the case for these fish, and we're gonna talk about why that is in a second. When it comes to water parameters, ideally, you should have hard water with a high pH. So for us, we do have relatively hard water, somewhere around 200 parts per million on both our KH and our GH. Our pH is right around an 8.2, so that's kind of right in the sweet spot there, and we like to keep the temperatures of our tanks somewhere between 78 and 80. And again, this is working out pretty well for this fish. Now, as I've already mentioned, this is a relatively mellow Imbuna. I originally tried to put these fish in our 75 gallon Imbuna community tank and that did not work out well. They got really bullied uh, very, very quickly. So I had to pull a couple of them out and put them in their own tank. And as I got more, I decided to set up this 33 long for them. And it's worked out really well so far. So you have to be kind of careful with your tank mates then. This is not a fish that I generally recommend to put in your standard Imbuna community tank. Like I said, just because they're not super aggressive. You can keep them with other Imbuna, but probably the ones that are gonna be a little bit more docile. So for instance, yellow labs might be something you would consider. Uh, Pseudotrophius ACI, I found that Pseudotrophius solosi don't tend to be super overly aggressive. You could potentially try them with red zebra cichlids, especially the females. I don't find them to be overly aggressive either. Fish I probably wouldn't try to mix with them are the more aggressive in Buna. Pretty much anything like uh, the erratus, uh, Kenny, especially male Kenny, I can be a little bit rough. Bumblebee cichlids. Uh, most of the Imbuna from Melanochromus would probably be a relatively bad idea. Uh, in, in Sobos, uh, I'm kind of on the fence with those as well. Could you mix them with peacocks? I have mixed some Imbunas with peacocks before. Uh, these ones, again, because they tend not to be overly aggressive, that might work. The only thing you have to consider is, as you can see from the video, these are relatively active fish. They like to dart around the tank. Now, I have found that these fish get along well with one another. As you can see, they kind of chase each other, or not really chase each other, but follow each other along uh, from one side of the tank to the other. And there's not really a lot of aggression here. Like I said, we've got this community that we're building up and they've gotten along pretty well uh, so far. So let's talk a little bit more about what we're feeding these fish. So they are in Buna, so that means they like to have that higher vegetable diet. And so we have, we've been feeding a lot of our fish North Fin uh, branded foods. Uh, they are a channel sponsor and I would just, I found those foods to be very, very good. Uh, so they've got some kelp flakes that we like. Uh, the cichlid flakes are great. The cichlid pellets are awesome. So they get a variety of flakes and pellets and occasionally some frozen brine shrimp. We try to stay away from the really super high protein foods just because it is an Imbuna and we don't want to run the risk of them having digestive issues. Now, when it comes to tank size, I would recommend something either four feet long, like this is a 33 gallon tank, but it's four feet long, it's a 33 long or a 40 gallon breeder or something larger. I think you're just gonna have the best luck with that. I've had pretty poor luck trying to keep Imbuna in anything smaller than either a four foot tank or the three foot 40 gallon breeder. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, when it comes to decorations, this tank is not done. In fact, Joanna's gonna go ahead and redo some of this. Uh, we're gonna add a lot more rock work because ideally, I'd like to see the rock work extend for the most, at least two thirds of this tank, if not three quarters. So we've got a little piece of driftwood in there, a little bit of rock work, but more would always be better. And that's really what they like and what they feel comfortable in. Uh, the wood's fine. You know, I have found that wood pretty much doesn't have a major impact on water quality, especially if your water is on the harder side. It's already pretty well buffered anyway. Uh, plants might have a little bit of a difficult time with just about any Imbuna when it comes to keeping them with plants just because they like to eat them. So we generally don't keep plants in there. Sometimes we'll throw some hornwort at the top. Uh, they'll leave that alone for a little while, but even that sometimes they will like to eat. Now when it comes to breeding, these fish are not terribly difficult to breed. They are a mouth brooder like a lot of the other Imbuna or pretty much all of them. 
uh, which means that the females are going to hold the eggs, the fertilized eggs, in their mouth, usually for around three weeks. It's kind of somewhat temperature dependent. And then after that, she's going to spit them out, spit out the fry. Uh, what we typically do with our fry is feed them live baby brine. And if we're really trying to breed these fish, what we'll do is if a female is holding, I will remove the female, put her in a 10 gallon tank, let her spit out the fry. And it's just a more relaxed setting. I have found, at least for most in Buna, if you keep them in a tank, a community tank, most of the fry are going to get eaten. And that's pretty much what's happened here. Every once in a while, we'll see a couple survive in the rock work. But if I don't pull the females out or pull the fry, the, the fry definitely don't last very long. So it's just something to keep in mind. You're going to want to pull the eggs or the female and let them grow up on their own. Uh, but the fry are pretty easy to raise. So as you can see, the males and females are very similar looking. The males are going to get a little bit more purple to them. They're also going to be slightly larger. But what's cool about them is they're really pretty no matter if it's a male or female. I will say this, if you really want to see that purple color come out, Put them on a lighter substrate. This just happens to be the setup that we have right now for them. But if I were doing this just for them, if I were to reset up this tank, a lighter stand would definitely give them more color. But this is a great fish, not super aggressive, great color, definitely worth a try. If you run across them at a pet store, I would highly recommend give them a, give them a shot. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.